This is the Cleveland Real Estate Investor Podcast. Joined by Mike and Lindsay Riley, Mike Ferrante leads the discussion on two topics, how to sell your home using Airbnb and how to manage your Airbnb business during the COVID-19 crisis. Stay tuned. Okay. Okay. We are recording. So let's uh, change it from R-rated to PG-13, Riley's. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're all, we're all PG here. So uh, welcome. Welcome to everyone who's watching here. I'm Mike Ferrante from Century 21 Homestar and the 21 Mike team. And today I have two very special guests uh, in order here, Lindsay Riley and Mike Riley from Riley Properties. How are you guys doing? Safe and healthy. Not good. Well, uh, it's, uh, what can I say? It's an interesting, uh, interesting time. And I think for people watching uh, this, I'm, I think the last uh, couple of weeks, pe- people have gotten used to watching these kind of yeah. headshot uh, discussions, people working uh, remotely. And I, I made a, it took me two years, but I finally organized my bookshelf behind me in my <laughs> office. So it looks great. You know, I, I, there's, we're trying to make lemonade out of lemons and, um, or there's a great, um, a great saying, I don't know who originated it. Um, I think Rahm Emanuel picked it up back in 09 when he was the chief of staff of for Obama, he came in and, you know, everything was cratering. Um, and Obama inherited just a, a, just a mess. And um, Rahm Emanuel said, never let a, a crisis go uh, un, unwasted or something along those, like take advantage of a crisis because you're yeah. going to do stuff that you've never done, that you've That's delayed, right. uh, right. that you've pushed off. And I think what we're doing right now um, with Zoom um, we've been talking about variations of that for over a year. That's right. And you've been doing that. Yeah. Um, we've been using video and virtual for years, so we're really well prepared for it. And on, on your podcast, that's one of the topics we hit was, you know, what changes are going to happen now? What what fruits are going to come from the labors of, you know, muddling through this? So let me, so we we started this today with two topics in mind, and obviously we meander when we talk, but just for those that are just tuning in, um, there's two things we're going to hit today. We're going to talk about Airbnb, and I've seen a lot of investors posting, oh man, I had all these cancellations, I'm struggling. So you guys are, are you guys have pivoted your Airbnb business, so mm-hmm. that's number one. Number two, one of the pivots has to do with realtors. So I want to make sure that realtors know that there's value in this for them too, and that's why I, I sent this out to all you guys because there's a way that we've talked about and actually are going to begin implementing where we can use Airbnb as a way to help sellers sell their homes in this very difficult time. You know, how many of my friends out there have sellers saying, yeah, we're going to sell, but we're going to wait till this is all over because we don't want strangers traipsing through our, our, our home. So we're going to get to that. So <laughs> let's start with that. Um, some of my friends have said, oh my God, my Airbnb business is tanking. I've got cancellations going on. Um, did you experience some of that? And maybe go ahead and segue into what did you do about it? Okay, well, okay. Lindsay, maybe, go maybe Lindsay, Yeah, I'm gonna, Lindsay, I'm gonna that. attest to that first because actually we received, today's Thursday, on Monday, we received a formal request slash message from uh, someone who had booked one of our properties on Blanche Avenue in Cleveland Heights. Um, he had made his reservation for a little over a one month stay. I think it was like a 45 day stay. He made his reservation back in January. I mean, this guy planned ahead Mm -hmm. and he reached out to me and he said, Hey, I can't make it. What can we do? What kind of refund can you give me? And even though it's been since Monday, I am still working through the Airbnb system to make sure that, and I have to talk obviously with Mike Riley about this too, because he and I work obviously very um, closely together on the different property deals that come through and the refunds for that matter. But this was the first one that we received where he reached out ahead of time, two months beforehand saying, I can't make it. What kind of refund can you give me? And so this is a very, this is new for us. This is new because we don't get it really a lot of cancellations through Airbnb. Um, and I've asked him to, you know, ask him like, hey, are you going to be coming into Cleveland at any time soon? And it's like, he has, there's just a big question mark at this point. So how do we deal with refunds that are coming through Airbnb? We take our time. We don't rush through it. And I would highly recommend to uh, investors out there or other people who have homes rented through Airbnb or VRBO for that matter, to really pay close attention and read meticulously 
the material that Airbnb and VRBO is providing because their websites, especially with Airbnb, I'm a, I'm a bigger fan of them than I am with VRBO. That's just my own preference. Um, but Airbnb support system, their articles, their blog, their website is just covered with information on what hosts need to do in order to either give someone a refund, give them a partial refund or not at all. Hopefully that's okay. not the case because this is very new times for us. Sure. But my recommendation, because we're going through that ourselves, and this is very new for us too, is to just read what Airbnb is giving you because they give you the answers. They tell you what you need to do. And their support system's great too. I've had to get on a phone with them. I've had to chat with them and they get right back to me with the information. Once you've got all those informations, once you've got all the facts, then you reach out to your guests and you start negotiating. You talk about what's going to be fair to you, what's going to be fair to them. Hopefully you can work out some sort of deal. So that's that's where we stand right now. Gotcha. Well, a few things piggybacking on that. Um, we're obviously into new territory for a lot of things we're going through here. Um, and there's a number of thoughts that just popped in my head while Lindsay was talking. First of all, you really should check with your lawyer because there we, we did with... Uh, our, uh, our lawyer about some of these refunds. And there is a clause about acts of God, which is this, this would mm -hmm. definitely fall, fall under. So um, you're going to have to give people back their refund. That's point number one. Uh, point number two, uh, Airbnb, uh, VRBO, uh, TripAdvisor, there were uh, about, you know, six months, a year ago, everybody was getting into the rental home game. Um, and this is where companies are getting stress tested. Um, if you go on CNBC, you're going to hear a lot of investment analysts talking about, if you're going to buy stocks, buy stocks in quality companies. Um, Airbnb really has their shit together. I mean, yeah, they, yeah. we've been very impressed with them. They got their own magazine. Uh, they really stick to their knitting. Um, they give good support. Um, the rest of these companies, they're, they're still trying to figure it out. I mean, even Zillow, we're, we're seeing on our advertising that Zillow is ramping up, but th their back office is still, you know, there's some holes um, yeah, yeah. there. Zillow was buying houses and they just pulled a bunch of offers. I mean, they pulled the rug out from under a bunch of people. So it's interesting mm -hmm. that you bring them up. Yeah. So this, so I think what you're seeing now coming out of this on the back end, which, you know, it could be a year um, uh, until we get, a, uh, you know, some uh, viral prophylactics, um, that, that's a whole other conversation. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. But I think stress testing, we're finding out that Airbnb is definitely um, a, a very good company to work with. Now, refunds. The rug's getting pulled out from under all you people out there who are running Airbnbs. The needs are changing. There are a lot of people who need Airbnb, but they're not vacation rentals. So if you've got it set up as a vacation rental, forget it. It ain't going to happen. Right. Um, but we are renting to a whole new um, market. We've got homes that... In the last two weeks, six of our properties got booked up from people uh, fleeing New York City, fleeing Washington D.C., fleeing the hot spots because they have family here and they just want they just want they don't have a second home in the Hamptons. <laughs> Even if you go to the Hamptons, the virus is there right. uh, roaming around. So, Mike, let me interject a question there, and this might be better for Lindsay. Uh, so, let's say you do have people who are renting your unit and they're coming here from a hot spot. Mm -hmm. The process different like are you preparing the units differently are you prepare are you doing different things when one person exits and someone else comes in like what what's different about that type of business okay let me answer that before i flip it over to lindsay because i know what she's going to say and we did cover this in our podcast the cleveland real estate investor so i'm going to plug that podcast for people today's to zoom sponsored by the cleveland real estate investor estate podcast investor, right. by well, mike we're riley gonna we're going to record this and clean it up and put it on our podcast but uh to your point we we haven't really done anything different. I mean, uh, I'm, uh, Lindsay will speak to one person who, who didn't want us to do anything. Um, they're bringing their own towels and linen and stuff like that. Most people just want a shelter from the virus. And this is where Cleveland is, is going to come out of this stronger than it was because of the whole medical infrastructure that's in Cleveland and the fact that we've got a governor who 
has been working hand in glove with the medical establishment in the state. So, I mean, people feel real good about the leadership we have in the medical industry and in the uh, in the state government and and the, all the mayors, whether they're Republican or Democrat. I'm a Democrat, um, but, you know, DeWine's got my vote next time he runs. Um, this is all about all hands on deck and let's stick to the facts and everybody pull together to get us out of this mess. But but my point is people just want a safe neighborhood, a clean house, some space, a safe neighborhood they can walk around. Uh, and on that point, I'll flip it over to Lindsay. Yeah, I was just going to say that from to, to Mike's point in regards to and all, well, to both of your points and to your question, Mike Ferrante, um, you know, in regards to what we're doing differently, um, I would say that our cleaning process really hasn't changed all that much because even when this whole thing started, we were still doing a deep cleaning and cleaning as if someone's coming in here. You know, we've, we've been working with medical patients for over the last couple of years who are coming in who have uh, immune systems that are um, uh, compromised and such. So we're, we're used to doing this kind of cleaning. So, but I would say though, that the one thing, one of the things that I've seen that has slightly changed to what um, Mike Riley was mentioning is that um, people are willing and they're open to bringing their own supplies. Mm -hmm. Because we all know at this point that when we go to a grocery store and we look down and look at the toilet paper or, or even some of the basic uh, cleaning supplies, those are not a stock, you know? There's not a lot there or there's a limit to how much you can buy. So we're approaching these, um, these rental deals um, conversing and talking, having like just having a conversation with our guests saying, you know what, here are the basics that we can provide you right now. And they're open to that. They're totally fine with that. And in fact, they actually feel better knowing that they can be bringing their own things, if not everything's provided there. So one of the shifts that I've certainly seen, and I've mentioned this before in the meetings that we've had at our company, one of the shifts that I've seen with the guests who we've been renting to since this whole COVID-19 happened is people seem to be a little bit more chill about the house that they're going to be going into. There's not this must have, got to have, everything has to be perfect. To Mike's point, they really just want a safe shelter. They want mm -hmm. a place where they can go, where they know that it's been clean, got some of the basic supplies, and they can go in without ever having to actually shake our hands or even having to meet us for that point. Right. right. Let me, so let I would me certainly please. say that the personality and the attitude of people when they're coming into a place, they know that they're almost coming into a safe haven. Yeah. Right. Let me, let me piggyback on that. Um, Lindsay hit a a bunch of really good buttons. Um, and I we have in our contracting business, which is the parent company, Riley Painting and Contracting, I mean, we have half a dozen people who do repairs, plumbers, electricians, stuff like that. So we've been servicing, we do a very good job of servicing the properties um, that we rent. Um, and, but on the one hand, uh, we can we can take care of problems, but on the other hand, we are limited with the shelter in place laws to what we can do, and which is a good thing. I mean, we are maintaining our social distance. Our guys have masks, et cetera, et cetera. But when people call up and say, "Well, I want this, I need this, I need that," well, hey, we can't take care of that now. Okay, right. I mean, right. you know, yeah, if the if the if the toilet blows up, yeah, we're on it. But this kind of secondary, I, I would prefer this versus that. No, I I can't. We're can't short do that right now. That's right now, we're sheltering we in place do that at this moment. But we can certainly take care of that when things start to normalize. And, and what are they going to do? They're going to give us a bad review because we couldn't get out there while we're sheltering in place. No, everybody, like what Lindsay was saying, is chill. But yeah. the point I want to make, you air other Airbnb people, is you got to think about your Airbnb as not a vacation home. It's a hotel. It's a bigger hotel. Right. And you think, who stays at a hotel? There's a lot of different people that stay at a hotel. The people fleeing New York, they stay at a hotel. People that just had flood damage in their house, they're going up on a hotel. Somebody coming in for a fellowship. Maybe they're coming in to the clinic or the UH for uh, because they're working on a, um, on a new uh, viral drug for the virus. Okay, There are a lot of reasons why people need a shelter. And if you keep thinking Airbnb is a vacation place, you're missing all the I other agree. needs yeah, I that agree. are out there. Yeah, that's a great clip. We're going to take that and we're going to we're going to put that in a 
in a commercial. That that quote right there is perfect. So let me, I want to sum up two things that you guys said that I want to make sure people got out of that. Number one, uh, Lindsay, what you said about not really changing what you do. It's funny, but I, I, I kind of smiled when you said that because my my wife and, and my daughter here, they kind of looked at me and said the same thing. They said, look, we we, ha- we haven't had to run out to the store for bleach wipes and for, you know, the Clorox cleanup and all that stuff because we already have it, you know, like every day it seems like they're wiping the counters and wiping off the doorknobs. Like that's just standard practice for them. So um, I'll tell you, it's really cool to hear you say that. And I know personally, the, the reason you guys are on here is because I know what a good business business is you guys run be- between Riley Properties and the painting and contracting company. Um, so that was one thing. Um, you also mentioned about, you know, taking advantage, like many of your rentals are in the Heights area and taking advantage of being close to the hospitals and all those different reasons, among which are the medical people that are coming in. You know, I, I can't tell you how many people approach us as realtors and say, hey, I just need to be here for a month or two. Can you get me a rental? And I say, I can't, but I know someone who can. So I think, Mike, what you said about broadening your minds, if you're in this business, about who your potential clients are is really important. And then the last one was, you know, the same thing that we're doing right now. You know, if someone says, well, I just want to go tire kicking uh, house shopping, Mike, we talk about this all the time. No, we can't do that right now. It's not business as usual, but there are people who have to buy or have to sell. And in your case, who have to come to Cleveland. You know, their job is sending them here. They have to come to Cleveland. These are the people, that's your market right now. Okay, let's take a break and talk very briefly about one of our sponsors, Team Mike with Century 21 Realty. I've worked with Mike Ferrante for over 10 years. He's smart and his team is energetic. Mike doesn't show a house, he sells a house with proactive 21st century marketing, such as 3D showings, which during this pandemic is becoming a real game changer in the real estate industry. So if you want to sell your house fast and at the right price, call Team Mike at Century 21 Realty. Okay, back to our show. So you said all that. I just wanted to reiterate it because I think those were awesome points. I think think when, I'm sorry, Lindsay, let me just jump in about the hotel. Let's just keep falling on the hotel aspect. You know, on the one hand, there's a lot of bad that we're going through now. We can't go out to a restaurant. You know, we can't have people over, you know, blah, blah. You know, it's, it's, it's not good. You go to the grocery store. I mean, you got your mask on, you got your sanitizer, you got your gloves. But again, think about, who we're competing with. We're competing with hotels. If you're coming into Cleveland or if you have to find a place in Cleveland, why would you want to stay at a hotel? Exactly. I mean, you got to interact with other people. Like, you know, they're there. You're, you, you what, you get out of the, the hallway of a hotel and you may be bumping into two or three other people there, you know, it's just in the hallway, in the right. elevator. But yeah. when you have your own house, your own house, I mean, you are spending less money renting a house than you are staying at a hotel for a month. Um, and so, again, the, the focus is we're competing with hotels. I can't think of, uh, just off the top of my head, of our, our 20 plus, 25 plus homes that we, we rent. We hardly do any people coming to Cleveland for a vacation. Yeah, it, it's Fair. all... Yeah, it's yeah, that maybe they're coming in for a wedding, maybe they're coming in for graduation. But the bulk of it is people whose house uh, just had a fire, um, people fleeing New York, people coming in for a fellowship. For, you know, I, I have investors, overseas investors who come here and they Airbnb when they're here for a week to check on their properties. Um, Lindsay, I know you, were, you had a point, so I want to get back to you, but I also want to ask a question and you can hit your point as well. The question I have for you is I know you do the marketing. So Mike talked about who the market is. Has this changed how you market your properties or has only the message changed? Mm, that's a good question. So to answer your question first, has this, how have you changed your marketing or have you been changing the message? It's a little bit both. It's mixed in together. I would actually, the the point that I, before I get to that, the point that I, that I wanted to make, the word that just kept flashing in front of me, you know, when we're talking with guests who are coming in, even if you're talking to people who are looking to buy, et cetera, in this time where we are right now, setting, setting expectations, This is what you can expect when you're coming into a rental nowadays where supplies may be limited. You're having, you're being able to have that conversation with the guests who are coming in. Hence why we've noticed 
that the stress level, they don't feel as stressed out, knowing that they can talk to someone, knowing that someone has their back, knowing yeah. that someone knows that they understand what's going on. So mm-hmm. that's the expert, that's the point that I wanted to, to, to make there. Um, but to answer your question, Mike, when the COVID-19, when the stay-at-home shelter happened, one of the first things that I did is I started looking at, and I've been getting um, many articles, actually each, each week I get a number of articles from a couple of uh, places that I subscribe to that give me tips on what we can be doing from an Airbnb uh, presence for the messages that we can be changing, the, the titles, even looking into rates, setting a discount, et cetera. And one of the things that I started picking up on in the titles is that people were saying, this is a safe place. This is a clean place. Clean, clean, clean. That was one of the big things that started flashing up on all these different wow. kinds of listings. Now, these are listings, granted, that have a good status on Airbnb. These right. aren't people who don't have any stars, who have no presence right. on, on the yeah. Airbnb. So, so my, my sofa uh, as an Airbnb can't probably qualify for that. Unless you can have a message on it that says, here's me cleaning it, you know, <laughs> maybe you get creative with the video because I know you do a lot of video with yeah. that. But that was the big thing. People started saying clean, ready to rent, close yeah. to CCF, minutes to the hospital. Those are the hot words. Those are what people right. want to hear about. So and that I was, was kidding that about was my sofa. Thing. My wife won't let anyone in our house right now. So no, you cannot stay on my sofa. So, but in our messaging, in our Airbnb profiles, even our Craigslist ads or our Zillow ads, because we don't just do Airbnb, you know, we do all these other platforms, is we are hitting on the hot words. Gotcha. Hot words being clean turnkey, check yourself in. We're minutes from the house if there's any problems. And you're also in an area where you can order takeout and it's there in five, 10, 15 minutes. You're not out in Hunting Valley or Pepper Pike or these areas where it's going to be slower. Right. In a city, but you're in the suburbs of it. Got and it. you're safe. Safe. safe that, yeah. that, is, that's, that is a buzzword because people know that they want to walk around the neighborhood. They want to walk the dog. They want to, yeah, and also pet coming friendly. From New York, people coming from New York and coming from Washington, DC, they want to be in an area where they can go on the sidewalks or they can walk to different spots, even though most of the spots are closed. Yeah. So again, we're just regurgitating what we're hearing. Those gotcha. are the well, that's I, always, I, but that's all Mike, everybody knows. I, I've been doing this business since I was 20 years old. It, marketing is always based on listening. What is the need here? And you can't, again, the need right now is, is, is out there. It's not like it, it, there's no need for Airbnb, um, but everybody's got to examine how they are responding and listening to those needs and right. providing. But, you know, look, at, I'm sorry, if you have an Airbnb where you've got a room in a house um, that you want to make some money on, or you've got a, you know, uh, some place in your garage, a little suite that you're renting out as an Airbnb. Hey, good luck. I'm sorry. You know, that, that you're, you're, but if you have a house, you better look at that house. Is it at a safe neighborhood? Is it close to medical and takeout? Um, then you, you can still th- survive if not thrive in this environment. That's right. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for is not only survive, but thrive. So let me do something here. Um, We're running a little long and I want to get to the realtor portion of this because I know a lot of my audience is realtors. So we alluded at the beginning that it's challenging for everybody, including guys like me who have sellers who want to sell their home, but they don't want the parade of 5, 10, 20 people coming through their house for showings. And so one of the ideas that you came up with another creative way to, to keep your units full is serving realtors. So why don't, why don't you go ahead and talk about that, Mike? You know, that was your idea. I'll let you take the credit for it and explain what we were talking about. Well, again, it was based on need. Um, we had uh, a couple of weeks ago, a long time customer of ours and, and a good friend of, of mine. Um, they're getting ready to move, um, but they have some work that needs to get done in the house. And we sat down um, of course, social distancing uh, in their living room. And I threw out the idea, look at why don't you stay work um, from your laptops in one of our furnished Airbnbs uh, that's vacant. 
Um, we had $10,000 worth of work to do on the house. They had to get it ready. They had a leak that needed to be fixed in the garage. Uh, we could we could get our, our crews in there to do the repairs and the cleanup and the painting. Um, we can keep our crews working safely because they're separated in different rooms, which is very important to us, buckets of water to wash. And we can tell our customer, listen, get out of the house, stay, you know, eight blocks away. They live in Shaker. So we had a Shaker place that was available. Nobody's there. It's got Wi-Fi. They can just go in there. They can, you know, they can do their work there. And we're working in the house and we're cleaning after we leave. Yep. So we're getting the work done, A. We're getting the work done, B, with our crew safely. And the customer's not compromised. Plus, we're setting it up so that when they want to show the house, they can vacate the house. Yeah. They can they can be living somewhere else for a couple of weeks, show the house, and the people walking in know that nobody's there, right? Right. It's empty. It's, it's a double-edged sword. You got buyers who don't want to go in an occupied house, and you got sellers who don't want people coming through their their house. So really, there's there's the two benefits. Get some work done on your house. So Mike, we, we've been talking a lot about how things are going to change after this. We're going to change how we do business as a result of what we learned during this process. So a year from now, in my mind now, when I have a seller who needs to get a bunch of work done, I'm going to think, oh my gosh, you know, Airbnb is a resource. I can move these people out for a month while they renovate their house to get exactly. it ready to sell. Whereas before, that wasn't really something we considered. This is a resource. This is going to change how we do business. And that's not uncommon on the rental side, though. We get many inquiries and many bookings from people saying, I'm moving to Cleveland. I've already purchased my home, yeah. but I need a place to stay before I can move in because the closing date is on this day. Right. That application, yes. But someone who's already here, for whatever reason, oh, I've never, I've personally never connected the dots to say, oh, you need to have a, a month's worth of work done on your house. Why don't you stay at an Airbnb for, for a month? For whatever reason, I just never put it together. But absolutely. And that's another, I love these little nuggets we come up with because that's another great tip. And it's a, a reason that my realtor friends should think of, you know, Riley Properties. When you've got that client coming here, and either they have work to be done or their home's still being built. You know, these are great resources for you to be able to place your client somewhere that's clean and safe, et cetera, even in times when there is no COVID-19. This is a resource that we need to use. Right. I think we also need to look at the economics of what we're going to be seeing in 2020. Um, um, I don't think people really appreciate how uh, life-changing this event's going to be. Um, playing itself out over the next year to two years. And you've got to wonder whether, I think the service industry, which uh, I was watching on CNBC is 70% of the GDP. You take, you you cut that in half. I mean, you're talking about a major, co major radical reshift in how people are working and what's the economic impact on that? How is that going to affect re real estate? So right. if you're selling your house, let's say you get out on the front end and you sell your house. I've been telling people, I think you should think about renting for a time period and let the dust settle here and then see what uh, what the marketplace looks like. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, shelter in place economically, um, you know, rent a house um, for like six months and then see uh, see what the landscape is for buying. You may find yourself in a buyer's market. Right. You know, in about three months. It's I, I, And I wish I knew the answer to that question, because I've, I saw the there's three different uh, firms that came out with their projection of what the recovery is going to look like. And all three of them are saying that V shaped recovery. I don't know that I'm buying it. I mean, obviously, for the sake of, of most of us, I, I hope that's that's true. But I saw you shake your head. I, no you know, I'm skeptical about the V shaped no way. recovery. No way. There's no way this is a V shaped recovery. I mean, you know, anybody who. First of all, if we don't have testing, if we don't have massive testing like they're doing in Germany, South Korea, I mean, they are lapping us in terms of testing. It is not only lapping, but laughable, the lack of testing we have. We've only tested less than 1% of the population yeah. in the U.S. And so if you don't have testing, that consistently is going to delay a true reopening of the economy. Yeah. So, 
Uh, there is no way this is going to be a light switch V-shape recovery. This will probably, for the rest of the year, be more of an L-shape, <laughs> if we're, or maybe even expanded U. Yeah. So we'll, we'll start seeing something in the fall. But unless uh, uh, people just end run the, you know, the the White House, uh, you know, Google working with Apple, the governors getting their regional acts together. You're already seeing the East Coast and West Coast come together. The the East Coast with New York Tri-State is now expanded into Pennsylvania. It's going down the coast. I wouldn't be surprised if Mike DeWine in Ohio jumped on that bandwagon of, of that whole uh, East Coast area. So when you get regionalism happening, they're going to then pool their money and work with these companies and basically bypass the White House. Uh, I think that's what's going to happen. So you're going to have regional recoveries that that are going to happen. Makes um, sense. And so uh, coming out of it, uh, Cleveland is going to be in a great great spot because it has the medical infrastructure. Yep. And a function, and and it'll probably have a lot more robust testing. I think you know I've got my iPhone here. I think they're going to follow the China model, which is like you're you're coming to a restaurant, you better be green lit. Yeah. Go in. Yeah. You're going to have people wearing wear an arm. It's going to be a whole new new world here. And until we get to that point where people feel safe to go out, we're going to be in that L shape recovery. Economic. So um, this is a great point. You know, talking about the recovery, I'm going to go ahead and plug what one of my next videos is going to be another market update. You know, I've been doing them regularly, not just monthly. I've been doing them every uh, week to two weeks because people are curious what's going to happen, at least with the real estate market here in Northeast Ohio. So make sure to tune in for that. And as we wrap it up here, I guess I'm just going to throw it back in your laps for a second. You know, maybe any final thoughts or, you know, knowing who our audience is, any pointers or final thoughts. Uh, I'll start with Lindsay. Yeah, um, I would say that I know that we're we're discussing how how the COVID-19 is affecting Airbnb businesses. But I want to just recommend that in this time when if you're renting out a property and you are if you are solely relying on Airbnb, to rent out your property, you got to start thinking a lot more outside that box right now. Now is the time to get creative with different marketing platforms for how you can be showcasing your rental. You can't just be relying solely on one rental platform. So that Love was it. one thing I wanted to say. Thank you. Yeah. Mike, final thought? I think what um, I think in the first week of May is going to be a very critical uh, period that people need to pay attention to. Um, you know, we're two weeks two to three weeks away from that, we're coming off our peak in the Cleveland area. We're starting down the other side of the mountain and that's not gonna happen overnight, but we're gonna get down to a place where there's gonna be a lot of active conversation about uh, how the Ohio area, the mid, this portion reopens, like I had said earlier. And that is going to give, that's something to watch very carefully how it impacts on real estate. If there is, if people can actually start seeing some light at the end of the tunnel, knowing that there is a path, it's not like this is going to be instantly cured, but I think people need to see a pathway established based on facts and science that they can, they can hook onto. And once they understand what that pathway is, they can make the appropriate changes. And like I said at the beginning, having a crisis is a great opportunity to really force yourself into doing some stuff that you delayed. Agreed. So Agreed. I'll be very interested in seeing that next, uh, uh, that next uh, market update in okay. two weeks because we'll, we'll know a little bit more. Well, it's already the 16th, so I'm going to be doing one here in the next couple of days. Um, one more final thought, uh, and either one of you can address this. I know that people are going to listen to what you guys are doing. Uh, a lot of our folks that listen are investors and realtors, and they're always looking for, first of all, a contractor. Um, so, I, so I want to make sure one of you go, you know, tell us how we reach you guys for contracting. And then if there's different contact information for Riley Properties, do one of you want to lay that out there? And, and we'll also put it in the text here. Sure. Sure. Yes. Um, so with rental inquiry, or excuse me, winter rental inquiry, sorry. Um, so I would say for, for information or for questions, um, a couple of ways you can reach us. First of all, you can go to our website, uh, which is www.riley-com 
riley-properties.com. So there's a hyphen in between Riley and properties. So riley-properties.com, or you can give us a call at 216-371-8160. Uh, that's our main line. So you'll get information, you'll be able to leave information or leave your question about uh, properties or even contracting work through that phone number. Yeah, I'll give a final, final, final thought on that. <laughs> final, final plug. Um, Mike, as you know, and if, and if people go to our website, uh, either rileypainting.com or Riley Properties, uh, Riley slash properties.com, you're going to listen to our podcast, which is the Cleveland Real Estate Investor. Um, we only deal with serious investors. Um, and you know, we, you can listen to our podcast. We get a lot of people calling who have bought properties in the wrong areas, who really are undercapitalized. Um, and I want people out there who are listening to us, we're, we are, on the one hand, we're a contracting company. On the other hand, we're, we have a rental, our own properties that we rent. But we have become more and more over the last couple of years, financial planners. We put our financial planning hat on. And we, we're managing somebody's investment in real estate on all parts of that. Uh, thinking outside the box, coming up with creative solutions. But at the end of the day, we want them into a nice property with a nice tenant that's going to give them a good 5 to 8% return on their money. Um, and in this environment, that is, that's a winning combination. So yeah. that's we always talk about buy. We always talk about assembling the, the team when you come here to Cleveland and, and that's, you know, the whole one-stop shop idea. So when you talk about, you know, creating a plan, that's, that's what it is. It's not just, Hey, I got some money, you know, let's buy some, let's buy some houses. There really should be more thought that goes into it. So yeah, you know, and we don't, we don't work with, we don't work with people. I mean, you can call some investment company and they'll say, listen, you need to have a minimum of $20 million before, before mm -hmm. we even talk to you. We're not that. But th there are filters. We're not looking to 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 manage a thousand properties. No way. Right, we're, we're, right now, we're managing. Uh, we have probably six clients outside of the state, and the and you know half of them, and they're yeah. serious. They trust us. There's a trust game going on, and and they're making and they're and they're doing well, and they're not getting. They're not dealing with having evictions and trying right. to find out who's right. going to repair a toilet. Well, okay. guys, I can't thank you enough. I think we probably had at least 10 gold nuggets in this recording. So <laughs> we'll be posting this out there, uh, Facebook, YouTube. I'll share it with you so you can find it on uh, Riley's channels. And hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Stay okay. safe. Wash your hands, everybody. Those hands. Thank you for listening to the Cleveland Real Estate Investor Podcast. Find old or new episodes on your favorite streaming services like Apple Podcasts, Overcast, Spotify, or SoundCloud. Or you can go to our website, www.riley-properties.com.